My mind is constantly spinning and moving in multiple directions throughout the day, and it makes remembering and focusing on the little things even harder. It also contributes to disjointed and unproductive meetings. Today, I've got eight points for you to remember before you walk into your next meeting. If you're like me and you find your ADD mind traveling in a hundred directions throughout the day, it becomes really difficult to focus on the little things you've learned and just struggle to recall. My friend Ken Kirkland helped me with with this issue a couple years back when he created these little reminder cards to help, help mentally prepare you for different experiences. The one that I come back to time and time again is this little card on how to mentally prep for your next meeting. These points will sound obvious when you hear them, but when was the last time you consciously reflected on them to facilitate better meetings? Here we go. Number one, let everyone speak. One-sided meetings will have people on their phones faster than you can say pointless. There is power and insight to be found when you allow everyone to speak in the meeting. You get different perspectives from different backgrounds and skill sets. Don't forget, it's not a lecture. It's collaboration when everyone is communicating and everyone is involved. Number two, respect others' feelings. I don't want you tuning out just because I use the word feelings. Don't paint this as too emotional for the workplace. It's so much more. Everyone in your meeting has different contexts and point of views that will have them feeling potentially very different about any given topic. All those feelings are valid. Make sure you validate what gets expressed. Number three, listen and restate. Communication can be difficult sometimes, so what I found can be incredibly helpful is to restate what it is you think you heard. Now, don't just start talking like a parrot repeating everything they said. Instead, listen to what they are expressing, and when you think you've got a grasp of it, restate it in your own words to ensure complete understanding. Make sure you're on the same page. Number four, if people are talking and you're just not quite following along, ask questions to understand. There's nothing worse than when people are nodding their heads as if we're all on the same page when really nobody is understanding and everyone is just too nice to ask the tough questions. I try to remember the adage that if you're thinking it, chances are somebody else is thinking it too. No question is a dumb question when you're earnestly seeking to better understand. Number five, in the nature of true collaboration, there will be ideas thrown out on the table. And meetings are not the best place to debate which opinion is the best. You'll eventually be taking all these ideas back to your design process and flushing them all out. Therefore, in these meetings, it's your job to protect and value everyone's ideas. Number six, this one could lead me down a rabbit hole, but I'll keep it short and maybe I'll save the full length one for another rant. Say yes first. The easiest job in the world is to be the naysayer who just pokes holes in ideas. The easiest job is the one where you simply say, no, we can't do that, or no, that would take too long. Try to get on board by simply responding, yes. Number seven, maintain low intensity and remember that everything is working to, everyone is working together. I've seen meetings completely derailed by defensiveness and arguments over what could have really been handled and much more even keeled. Take a moment to zoom out and recognize that these arguments are really just first world problems and everything is gonna be okay in the end. Treat people with respect. Don't get bent out of shape. And our last point, number eight, help everyone in the room succeed. You will be well respected and liked among your peers if you can be the one who's helping everyone become successful. Understand their needs and their desires and work to make their lives easier will in turn make your life easier. It's one of those backward concepts, but the more you try and help others, the more you're really helping yourself, much more so than if you really just tried to only help yourself. So that's it. Eight points to remember before your next meeting. I'm not going to recap all of them because honestly, this was short enough that you can just rewind and go back a little bit. So have a good one. I'll see you next Tuesday. Remember those eight points.